When you want expert analysis on what's going on in Nigeria, fused wow. with a little bit of humor, you know where to tune to. It's Hello Nigeria. And of course, no other person than Izuku Chukudi delivers it hot, fresh, spicy, straight like it came from your mother's cooking pot. Absolutely. Hi. I'm shy. you blushing. blushing. Happy, Happy Tuesday. Tuesday. How, How are you doing? I'm very, very fine. Good. Okay, you need to throw in, waiting on the conversation about plantains. What's mm. your take? You see, why you call it plantain? Is disrespectful. Dodo. Do. Ha! Huh. Yes. Thank you. Olive yeah. has a knock for the first time today because she's been throwing all her shots no, at no, me. No, 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 no. He's on my side. Oh, when somebody doesn't gosh. like plantain, she was supposed to be sitting down ah, here. Ah, no, anybody that doesn't like Crime plantain. Crime against no, the no, Anybody that doesn't like plantain, we need to check whether the person is from France. <laughs> and the person should have gone back with Macron. Well, I should have gone Macron. back with Macron. Macron. <laughs> See, the truth is... Oh, wow. Dodo. Oh, Dodo should be a national... Um, um, how, how do I put it now? No, no, it should be a national delicacy. Can I even tell you what my pastor once said? Um, he said we should remove the horse in our coat of arms. <laughs> I put Dodo there. A very, very ripe bunch. <laughs> because the truth is, whether it's, you know, Dodo, Dodo is just like... Wait, no, you lost me at ripe. You completely lost me What's at ripe. Do you guys like ripe Dodo? How can you... So you fry ripe Dodo. If, even when I fry no, my Dodo, it can't be ripe. Fry ripe Dodo. That's what I, I, that's what, that's what I want to explain. You mm. see, Dodo, why I say Dodo should be a national delicacy is because... Dodo is just like the word gold. The Hausa man says gold. Just, the Yoga man just says gold. Dodo. The Igbo man says gold. Irrespective of the part of Nigeria where you hail from, you say gold. Now, Dodo. Mm -hmm. There are certain places you come from, they like it on rap. Mm -hmm. You understand? They put it inside pepper soup. It's called with plenty uh, pepper. Ukodo. Ukodo. There are places you come from, you mash it with potatoes. Or you I make it into porridge. Or you, or you, or you, or you do like a, a beans pudding. Uh, in in Bayelsa State, it's called kekemfia. No, but that is actually yum. It's actually yum. That one I will say I like. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. I'm not that bad. <laughs> Please let us know what side of the divide you're on. I think Chukudi and I have unanimously agreed that Leila is not in Nigeria. And she, we should have sent her back with Macron. Should have done better in France than she is in Nigeria by discriminating against Dodo. Such a racist. Hmm. All right, let's look at <laughs> Leila. Don't worry. I'm so over we'll Olive today, people. Show. You know I love you. I'm over Olive today. I'm <laughs> fully All over. All right, her. let's look at some very serious stuff that does not concern Dodo. 2019, PDP, ADC, RAPC, 36 other parties signed Grand Alliance MOU to oust APC. The People's Democratic Party, the African Democratic Congress, ADC, the Reformed All Progressive Congress, RAPC, and 36 other political parties signed a Memorandum of Understanding in a Grand Alliance to form a Government of National Unity in 2019. The sole agenda, according to the MOU, is to produce a joint presidential candidate capable of winning the election and enthrone a new government at the expiration of President Muhammad Buhari's tenure in 2019. So is it safe to say Chukudi that this is an alliance that has been, that is purposely trying to oust him and put somebody else? Well, the truth is, politicians will always be politicians. And for them, it is essentially about personal interest. Now, let's play this very little exercise. <coughs> I'm going to call out five names in the history of Nigeria. We call them our founding fathers, our mothers, who are very, very sorry. <laughs> but I would want you to nod your head. Just think of five, five important people that played a prominent role in the political evolution of Nigeria. And when I mention their names, I would like you people to nod at the same time. If I mention any name that you have thought about, Namdi Azikiwe, Amadu Belu, Obafemi Aolo, I don't need to go far. You know why we remember these three people? Even though we have a lot of you know, men and women, great men and women in Nigeria history that have done a lot. People like, you know, Habat Makole, Malamami Nukano, and the likes. The truth is, we remember these people because of their contribution to nation building and national development. It wasn't essentially about self-aggrandizement or whatever wealth they could amass for themselves. But you see the lot that we have today. A majority of those that constitute Nigeria's political class today are only concerned about their pockets. I cannot for the life of me believe that since they return to democratic rule, after protracted years of military rule on the 29th of May 1999 till date, Nigerians are still wallowing in poverty. In fact, we have gotten to the level where a lot of the people in Nigeria are in the state where you are, you are either experiencing the senior brother or elder sister of poverty, extreme poverty. Now, we have had budgets upon budgets. We have had leadership upon successive leadership, and all of them have failed to essentially live up to their responsibility of advancing the interests of the people. Nigerians are not wicked. Nigerians are not hungry. Nigerians are not lazy. 
Nigerians are, I am going to tell you because I've interacted with a lot of people, even though some on social media from different parts of this world. Nigerians are one of the most dynamic people that you see on the face of the earth. We can blow hot, 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 hot. But the very next minute, we're so soft. We're like a special woman created by God Almighty. Now, what we must do as Nigerians is to look at these politicians that have converged to sign a memorandum of understanding. This is not the first time. It is always a gathering of strange bedfellows. Now, when they come together, what they do is to advance their interest. Now, when it is difficult for them to find a common ground, that is when there's an issue. Mm. Do not forget that the CPC, under the leadership of um, President Mamadou Dubari, then General Mamadou Dubari at the time, the ACN, under the leadership of Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the Ashiwaju, and also Chief Bisi Akonde, one quarter of Abga, under the leadership of um, this, this governor that lives on the statute, what's his name? <laughs> Rocha Sokrocha. And also the MPDP, seven governors that worked out on the convention of the PDP, but two later returned and said the idea was not to join the opposition. It is always about their interest. And we saw how quickly things fell apart when Bukola Saraki indicated his interest to be Senate President and Yakub Dogara indicated his interest to be Speaker of the House of Representatives. Now, what Nigerians must do is to watch. I always insist it is not about February 16th and March 2nd, 2019. It is from today. They have set the ball rolling. We must also begin. Mm. In politics, it is a game of numbers. What you must do is have the majority on your side. And Nigerians constitute the majority because if you look at all of these people in government today or that have been in government, they are not even up to 0.0001% of the Nigerian population. Now, these people arrogate wealth to themselves and enjoy why the majority of Nigerians continue to wallow in abject poverty. What we must do is tell them that never again will we allow a group of people to take us for a ride. They will bring the rice. We will collect it because we need the rice. <laughs> They will bring the money. We will collect it because we need the money. But our resolve to kick out bad leadership and enthrone those who are passionate about Nigeria will not be wavered. And what we must do is watch, listen, and speak to each other because the destiny of our country is in our hands. I, I, I just think I need to add that yesterday I heard that we had 37 days to the closure of registration for PVCs. I mm -hmm. haven't confirmed that information. No, it's true. It is, right? Yeah. So now it's 36 days as of today. So we will keep doing the countdown every day on Hello Nigeria to remind you why you need to get this PVC, why you need to register, and why you need to vote for your choice. We have gotten to the point where you don't need to remind people. <clears throat> if you want to suffer, suffer. Yeah, of course. We have gotten to the point where you don't need to remind people. We have cried and we have, we have lost our voice saying it is your constitutional responsibility to exercise your right to franchise or suffrage if you have attained a particular age and if you are qualified. Why should we be begging you to go out and register so that you can exercise your civic rights? What Nigerians must understand is if we keep folding our arms and saying, I'm not interested, anything they like, let them do, they will continue to do what they want to do. But if you say never again, will because in my, in my generation, my grandfather, father, all of them shouted up Nepal. I also shouted up Nepal. You children will shout up Nepal. Remember the children that we are giving birth to are really very smart. One day they will ask you, Daddy, when this country was being run like a, like a one-man business, where were where you? Where were you? <laughs> Why so dumb? <laughs> I hope and pray that our children oh, don't get to wow. ask us kids like this. But beyond Absolutely. hoping and praying, we need to act. We need to do something. We need to get our PVCs. And we need to get involved to ask the right question. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.